Hey everyone, my name is Jabari K. Smith and you're watching The Professional Athlete. Today I'm here with my good friend, professional BMX rider, entrepreneur, and musician, Kenny Sanders. Kenny, how's it going, man? Good, man. How are you? It's pretty good. Good to see good, you. Good. Well, Kenny, man, since you're here with me, why don't you share with everyone a little bit about who you are and what you do? Oh, man. Um, my story's kind of long, but to put it short, um, I grew up in Utah, small little farm town. Um, I've always been passionately curious my whole life, which is why I ride BMX. I did that for probably 17 years or so, which uh, my passions grew on to music. And then I also went on to entrepreneurship. Um, I started a company called Not Socks, and then I started a clothing company called TTM Lifestyle. And the story still goes on. The book's still being written. I love it. I love it. Well, let's talk about BMX. What got yeah. you involved with BMX? Um, I stayed so home. At I, what I moment was it for you when I was a little kid, like we this all do? This is what I'm supposed to be And doing. my mom this is what rented me the movie called Red. I think um, it was like man. 12 or 13 years old. I don't know. It's, and uh, if you've seen the movie Red, there's a lot of BMX riding in it. And just so kind after of that, having I just, fun you know, with it I wanted as a, a hobby. BMX bike, and, and I got my um, stepbrother's bike. It just became. Jumping off of a I, I think once I figured out that I could make money with it, and, and I could get sponsors, and, and I could jumps uh, and somehow, you know, get uh, free clothes or something. Right, right. Um, that's kind of when I took it a little more serious. It was always more of a hobby for me, mm -hmm. but um, once once I got my first sponsor and the first package of free clothes and free swag showed yeah. up, I just. I just stuck with it and I was like, oh man, this is awesome, you know, yeah. and you know, whether the sponsors were there or not, I still would have ridden right. as much as I did. I, I rode probably like nine hours a day, seven days a week, every day. It literally consumed my entire life. All right, Kenny. So I'm about to ask you a crazy question. I like to call this part of locker room. Oh man. And in locker room, I want you to share with everyone one of your most craziest stories as a right. Oh man, there's so many of them. Um, Keep it to keep it kind of like on the lighter side yeah. um, you know one of one of the first ones that sticks out with me is uh, I went on an Albies trip which is like the first sponsor I ever had you know I flew to Michigan we got in a, in a you know van like with trailers and all that stuff and we made our way down to Florida and we finally got to Florida everyone's just partying and having a good time Albies is kind of a lot of the writers are you know they, they they like to have fun they like to party and whatnot and we got into our hotel and we're in our hotel for literally 30 minutes. And within 30 minutes, all the, uh, all the pool furniture is inside the pool. They literally took the mattress out of the room and like threw it like, you know, off second story into the pool and like diving into it. And like, everyone's freaking out. And, and th at this moment, I'm like, oh my God, like we're kind of like rock stars, you know? <laughs> like, like this is crazy, you know? Cause when you pull up in like a, you know, like a nice van with trailers, like people know you're on tour and right. they kind of they kind of let you live like that mm -hmm. for a little bit. But you know, not, not in this case, we got the hotel manager running, you know, running after us. And wow. we ended up getting kicked out of the hotel literally within two hours of us being there. We were kicked out, uh, cops were called, um, it just kind of, escalated to uh yeah. to to almost to the point where you know it was my first experience yeah. like on tour and i was just like oh my god this is so that really crazy. does happen i cleaned up my ways a little bit after the first couple <laughs> couple trips no more no more couches in the pool it's no more couches music, and mattresses right? in the pool well, it's you know it's, next party you have invite me <laughs> yeah 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 well look how did you handle you know your, your stardom as far as in like i always call it those bright lights and i know once you make it to a certain level you know, pressure sets in as mm -hmm. far as in needing to perform consistently. How did right. you deal with that? Because now everybody that you're going against is good. Yeah. And you know, how did you take that in? How did you mentally prepare? Oh man, it was it was tough. Like at first, you know, some of my sponsors, like I started getting more and more serious sponsors, like Rockwell watches. I was riding for Twigs Wood or Twigs uh, Woodwear, which is you know, sunglass company, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they wanted me to do so many competitions per month or per year. And I honestly, as, as, a, as a BMX rider, I was never really that competitive. I was more about getting photos and magazines and video shoots. And I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to keep it at a minimum of competing because when I was competing, it made me feel like it was work, you know? And then therefore it made me not want to do it as much even though I still wanted to do it. And so I was fortunate enough to uh, talk to my sponsors about, you know, I want to stick with more doing photo shoots and like, little things like that. I did competitions here and there, like I did like the Utah Truth Against Tobacco X Games. I took second in that one, which was 
really cool very you know very proud experience that I had you know like wow I can I still kind of got it you know and whatnot but um, as far as handling the stardom I mean there, there's not that crazy a stardom in BMX if you're in the BMX world like you know like who I was type thing but outside of that there's you know there's I can walk around and not really get bothered gotcha. um, my biggest stardom experience honestly was I, I got mixed up with rumors with Taylor Swift that we were dating and it started in the UK oh. and it went worldwide and that that uh you know that week when I left my house I, I was living in LA at the time and anywhere I went people were coming up to me asking me if the story was true wow. there's paparazzi you know trying to get photos it was a whole crazy experience and it kind of overwhelmed me so I have a cabin in Utah in the middle of nowhere it's in Fish Lake and uh I, I escaped there for for about a week and a half after that rumor came out because I couldn't go anywhere you know it was, it was yeah. crazy and that was that was more stardom than I've ever felt in my life. It was, gotcha. it was insane. Well, look, I also want to talk about, I mean, there's so much more to you. You're an entrepreneur. You're in the music. So let, let's talk about that. Before I get into that, at one point in time, I, I use the terminology, you have to put the cleats up. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, hey, I got to step away from the game. Right. You may do it just for joy and fun and leisure, but this is not something that's going to generate revenue or right. living for you. At what point in time in your life when you realize you had to make that decision? Um, so it was back probably back in like 2000 oh man like 2012 or something I broke my foot really really bad in like six spots I tore ligaments I was out for probably a year and so if I'm not out there getting photos or doing anything for my sponsors you know there's nothing coming in type thing and so um, I was also talking with a couple older riders that when they're when they're not professional anymore when they get too old to ride they have to find something else you know they it's not like football or basketball or it's something that you can retire from and have money for the rest of your life you need right. to like get it together quick right and so i i actually uh talked to dave mira about it a little bit and he he's an entrepreneur he does a lot of right. amazing things and that kind of got me into uh, you know maybe i should maybe during this time that i'm injured i should start a company or something to get some sort of money coming in and i ended up starting not socks which is that sockless solution company that I invented and um, it's it, it's been amazing and I actually took about three three and a half four years off of BMX riding to get that going because I I then almost got burnt out on BMX and became obsessed with business because it's something I've always wanted to get into and during that time while while uh, you know not socks was starting up I started a t-shirt brand because if I sold a couple t-shirts a week that's yeah. gas money that's right. food on the table you know goes towards rent and it, it just kind of went up from there and I've just been obsessed with it ever since. So you would say that you probably had a successful transition. Mm -hmm. I mean, you already, once you got injured, you knew what to do. Yeah. How, yeah. Did, how did you take that emotionally though, knowing that you had to step away from it? Um, it was, the, the toughest part for me, honestly, was BMX is therapeutic for me. You know, whenever I get stressed with life or I get angry with something, I get on my bike and I, I go crazy. When I crash, it actually, in a weird way, it feels good to crash when I'm like stressed mm. out, you know, because it, it makes me feel like I'm alive again. It makes me feel real. It makes me more in the moment. And so when I was going into business and I wasn't writing, I would get so frustrated. I would get stressed out. I wouldn't have any money at point at like some points in my life. And it was just tough because I couldn't really get back on the bike because, you know, one, my foot was still pretty mangled. I was still going through physical therapy. But at the same time, I was burnt out on it. And so I was just trying to find something else that I could put my mindset on therapeutic wise and that honestly led me back to BMX you know business is therapeutic for me but it doesn't give me the type of adrenaline that BMX does when right. I'm about to crash on some huge jump exactly. or something it's like so that that honestly led me back to BMX all right Kenny I got a product with me that is going to change the game especially for people who are into the sockless lifestyle I have with me the not sock explain to everyone how you came up with this product the concept of it and just give us the story behind it so growing up i you know growing up in a small little town i, I hardly wore shoes as it was if, if i went to ride bikes i would just put my shoes on i never wore the socks with it because i'd get too hot you know and so with going sockless everybody knows if you go sockless you sweat in your shoes that sweat stays in your shoes and your shoes will smell like sour chips after a while <laughs> exactly. and you gotta you got to throw them away, you know, right. after a month or so, especially with doing an, like an extreme sport, you know, yeah. sweating all day. And so 
I, I learned to sew at a young age. I just got really curious on how to sew, so I went to Walmart and bought a sewing machine. And I started to like, you know, trim my clothes up and just do little weird things like that. And I just kept wondering, like, what can I do about this sockless thing? You know, I'm, I'm throwing away so many shoes. I started looking at the sock and I started looking inside my shoe and I was like, wait, I could just cut this sock up and like sew it around the insole to where I'm still sockless but I'm standing on a sock. Right. And then that way when I'm sweating, the sweat goes into the sock I'm standing on. At that point we decided to, you know, research odor eating stuff where we put bamboo and charcoal inside of the actual cotton of the sock which eliminates odors. Mm. That way when you take your foot out there's no there's no odor whatsoever. Yeah. And that's it's just you know we're still we're still going at it but at this point we've sold worldwide we sold you know over 20,000 just online alone wow. in the last year and a half it's wow. it's absolutely incredible I mean this is awesome I mean I'm wearing it right now and like I said <laughs> my, my feet feel dry when I take my shoes off there's no odor like I really love this product it, it, the magic is in the actual sock exactly. but Again, it's not meant to go around your sock, it's meant to go around an insole. Exactly. And where can so an individual find this product? So we, we're in a couple shops, like we're in one um, called Hipster Market in Brooklyn, New York. Okay. Um, we're in a Hawk on Sunset Boulevard, but main, the, the main business for us is online. Got it. Everything's online. I mean, this day and age, everybody purchases anything this online. True. This is true. So. That's awesome. Well, you're also into more things. So, like I said, you, of course, you're an entrepreneur and you're a musician. So, share with us some of the things that you're working on. I know you just started a YouTube subscription, you and your significant other. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about that as well. Yeah, so um, I'm dating Crystal Rosguera, which is a professional uh, figure skater. Mm -hmm. And um, when we started dating, um, we you know we we just realized we don't have the normal life that a lot of other people have we don't right. really do the nine to five thing and um we got it we started looking into youtube vlogging and how people are making money at that too exactly. and and then we we're just like you know what we should just start filming our daily lives it's not even with me riding bmx and her ice skating there's mm -hmm. very little of that on there it's it's mainly us going to do dumb things that most couples go do it's like one day we're like let's go ghost hunting let's find like an abandoned house and yeah. like go into it and just film and document the whole thing or let's let's go on a hollywood tour or let's just walk around beverly hills and the whole time we're just you know we bust our phones out and yeah. we just do little things but we're also you know we're, we're very mature in a lot of ways but yeah. we're also very immature in a lot of ways and I get it. that's what makes that that's what makes the youtube funny um the youtube is called ckla and so when you type that in you can find it and yeah. it's it, it's it's just gotten a lot of growth. I mean, in five months, we within five months we were signed on with Broadband TV. We had over a hundred thousand views on wow. all, all of our videos. Uh, Nespresso sent us a coffee machine to do an unboxing. Wow. We're getting paid to do unboxings now. It's it's literally a whole side of business that I had no clue wow. even existed, and so, it's it's amazing. So I'm really talking to the real life Dos Equis man. That's <laughs> like right, you're the man. most interesting man in that's, America right now. That's right. Give me that <laughs> deal, man. Yeah, Give you, me that you, deal. You retire and then you date a, a professional figure skater. That's how yeah. life works. It's I crazy. I need to switch shoes with you. <laughs> Great. It's crazy. So Kenny, from athlete to another. We understand that we have a hidden drive, a hidden motor right. that sometimes only other athletes can identify. And my main thing is sharing with the world that athletes already have the DNA and have what it takes to be successful right. in this world. So share with us what were some of the principles that you translated from sports into your everyday life that's helping you sustain success right now? Um, I think the number one thing in, this, uh, in any athlete out there, when you're, when you're trying, you fail so many times, like, like football, baseball, soccer, skateboarding, BMX, anything, you know? It's like any trick you learn or any, anything you learn in sports, you, you literally will fail 40 times right. before you get it right. And then once you get it right, it's, it's brain memory and then it, yeah. it sticks with you. And so, Moving that onto entrepreneurship, you know, most people that aren't into sports, they're so afraid of failure, you mm -hmm. know, but the truth is, like, it's just like a little kid when he's learning to walk. He falls so many times and then right. finally he learns to walk and he's walking for the rest of his life. And right. with business, I, you know, I failed a couple times. I, I started some little, little things I, I, and not even going like on the business, it, business itself. I failed on trying to trademark a business. Right. I failed on trying to get a patent on something you know I mean it takes money that you've got to get investors for it also yeah. takes research a lot yeah. of people don't research and everything is on the internet that you want to learn you just yeah. got to do the research but yeah. you know going from athlete to entrepreneurship it just works because you're you're used to that failure and that discipline to get something going Definitely, definitely. so tell me then what would you tell 
the 16-year-old Kenny today that will help them be just as successful as you are even even more? Um, man, I, I just think kind of what I was saying, don't be afraid of failure whatsoever. I mean, go after it. And the, the more you fail, the more you're learning. You know, you need, to, you need to look at everything in life as you're going to school for it. Like, like when you fail at something, you know not what to do the next time you try it. You know, it's like, like okay, I tried it this way, it didn't work. So now I'm gonna try it this way. And if it doesn't work, try it a different way. Once you see a path that starts working, stick with that, you know? And that's, that would've helped me along way faster when I was 16 years old because, you know, I, I, even though I was used to trial and error with BMX, right. it was really hard. It, you know, I'd work my butt off on something and it wouldn't work and then I'd have to take like a, a, a few month break from it and I'd get burnt out on it. But the main thing is just stick with it, you know? Right. Realize that you're learning along the way. Okay, cool. Well, where can people find you? Um, you mentioned where they can go get the Knot Socks, but where, what's the YouTube channel where they can watch your, your videos and listen to your music? So, uh, music, you can just type in Sonder Saloon on Spotify or, you know, go to uh, iTunes, type in Sonder Saloon or SonderSaloon.com. Uh, my main social media outlet is uh, Instagram. I have Facebook and Twitter, but I mainly do everything from Instagram because it's easier for me time-wise and whatnot. So, my Instagram is at Kenny Sockless just because I'm always sockless, I own Knot Socks. Um, knotsocks.com to check those out. My previous clothing company that I founded is ttmlifestyle.com. Um, man, other than that, it's just, you know, you can use the Google. Cool. Well, look, Kenny, thanks for sharing your time with us. Yes. You had some valuable information that the world will hopefully receive. Um, look forward to visiting with you more. Thank you uh, very much. We got a, a backstory just to share with everyone. He's good friends with my uh, my other family, my brother Riley. So they go they go way back. They ride together. So it was a mutual connection. One small world. Small world. Small world. Exactly. Man. But uh, everyone, this is Kenny Sanders, and I'm Jabari K. Smith. And you were watching the professional athlete. So, bye.